Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about types of stiffeners. Okay, so this is the cross section layer of the plate cutter. So this is the top is the bolted plate cutter and bottom is the welded plate cutter. So now I am going to show you the longitudinal view of the plate cutter. It means the length. It means if you observe from the side. So in this view, the longitudinal view is our length view is perpendicular to the board. So if we see from the side, we are going to observe the length. So that I am going to show you here. The longitudinal view. So this is the length. So we know that these two flanges, top and bottom flanges looks like a two lines. Okay, this is two lines, top, bottom flange and top flange two lines and this is the back. That looks like a rectangle. And uh, this is a simply supported like. Clear. So this is the longitudinal view. Now if you want to show the dimensions, then this is the depth of the web of the plate cutter T. We represent it with T. Clear. And this is the thickness TW. Clear. This is the thickness TW and depth is D. And in this also if you, if you want to show, this is the depth of the plate cutter T. And we know obviously this is the TW. Agree. So, if T by, okay, if T by TW is less than 67 epsilon W, so epsilon W is nothing but under root yield stress of the web by 2. So here we, here we are using three plates, okay, web plate and two flange plates. So in this, the web plate will have one yield strength and flange plate will have one yield strength. Obviously, if you use mild steel, R will have same yield strength as 250. So here EW is the ratio for web. So here, F suffix YW is the yield stress of a web plate. This is the yield stress of a web plate. Yield stress of a web plate. So if if D by T W the depth of the web by thickness of the web is less than 67 E, then design it as ordinary. Bit. It means whatever the discussions or whatever the things we have discussed in the design of the beam, same. Design it like that. You design by following the same procedure. So design as a design as an ordinary beam. Design as ordinary beam. But if this D by TW okay, if this D by TW is greater than 67 then what happened? Actually, for what, what is this ratio? Which is going to so this ratio is going to signify which parameter? Why it is important? So based on this ratio, we are going to say whether the web is going to buckle or not. So if this D by T W is less than 67, then web will not buckle. Then we can go into design the even plate cutter as an ordinary beam. 
But if the T by Tw, the D by Tw, depth of the web by thickness of the web ratio is greater than 67 epsilon yeah. W, then the web is going to buckle. So if web buckles, then we have, we have to design it as a plate cutter line, slender section. So plate cutter is usually a slender section, but if the plate cutter is going to satisfy this condition, then it is not a slender section. It may be a plastic or compact or semi-compact. But usually for a plate cutter, this ratio is greater than 67 U. Now once you think, once you think, if the depth of the web is more, now more chances are there for it to buckle or not. Even in column also, if length or height of a column is more, now more chances are there for it to buckle. That is a quite obvious thing. Here also the same thing. So obviously the depth of the plate cutter will be more. Then more chances are there for it to buckle, clear or not. Okay, so the, this is the design condition. So we have to check this first. So whenever we are going to design the dimensions, after that immediately we have to do this check. So after doing this check, we came to know that whether the plate cutter has to be designed as ordinary beam or slender section. So if it is ordinary beam, follow the procedure what we discussed previously. But if it is not ordinary beam, then we have to follow separate procedure. So which is very complicated and lengthy. So from exam point of view, the detailed procedure for the design of the plate cutter is not required. But there exist some provisions and some procedure that is only required. So detailed procedure is not required from exam point of view. Only some provisions and some part of the procedure is required. So first you take this diagram clearly and leave the space. So here we are going to show so many things. So you take a new page, fresh page and in that first show the cross section and then show the longitudinal view. So make it, keep it clearly so that we are going to show so many things here. And you show this also, this is the welded plate cutter. So as we discussed previously, we may connect these three plates either by using bolts or weld. Clear? So if you use bolt, then it is known as bolted plate cutter. If you use weld, then it is known as welded plate cutter. So first you take it out. Now regarding the depth of the web, there exists a one provision. So here starts the provision, the first provision. Economical depth. Economical depth of plate cutter. Economical depth of plate cutter. So the formula for it is T is equal to mk by fy whole power 1 by 3 where m is the design factor bending moment and k is the ratio which is equal to d by tw. So this is the economical depth of the plate cutter. Okay, this is the formula for the economical depth of the plate cutter. So after getting D, how to get the overall depth? So overall depth here is, if you see in this diagram, overall depth is from extreme to extreme. So this is the overall depth. Agree or not? So now to get that, first calculate this D based on the formula. After that, add these two thicknesses. Okay, thickness of these two plates and different as the spacing is there, add that spacing also. Clear or not? So in this way, we are going to find the economical depth of the plate cutter. So after finding the economical depth, as what we had discussed in the previous case, that is D by TW less than 67, then design is ordinary beam. But if it is greater than 67, then we have to follow some procedure. As I said, which is very complicated and lengthy. So we are not required for our exam point of view. Okay, from our exam point of view, it is not required. Clear? So take this formula. Now that too, if you observe here, in this case for bolted plate cutter, this total is called as compression flange. In bolted plate cutter, the compression flange is nothing but compression plate and then two angles and then web equivalence. So see here, some web is sandwiched between these two angles. Clear or not? Flange angles. So that is also included in flange, okay, compression flange. And if we take the tension, so in tension this is called as tension flange. This total is called as tension flange. 
not simply displayed in in voltage plate cutter that is called as tension flange okay but coming to the welded plate cutter simply the connection is very simplified so simply this is called as compression flange and this is called as tension flange and this is web simply but coming to the voltage plate cutter compression flange includes flange plate plus flange angles plus web bicolor Web bicolor. So compression plate consists of flange plate plus flange angles. These two flange angles and web bicolor. In the same way, tension flange consists of tension plate or flange plate, two angles and then web bicolor. So that is what in bolted plate cutter. And so just now we have discussed that as the depth increases, chances are there for that bar. Web to buckle. Agree or not? As the depth increases, chances are there for that web to buckle. So now to prevent that buckling, we are going to provide stiffness. Agree? So here, here there exist so many types of buckling. The reason this is the slender section. Slender section means dimensions are more. Chances are there for it to buckle. Clear? If you see the dictionary meaning of slender, what is meant by slender? The dictionary meaning it is in compared with other dimension, one dimension, other dimensions are more. That is the meaning of slender. So we are going to design, usually we are going to design plate cutter as a slender section. It means in comparison with one dimension, other dimensions are more. So the chances are there for it to buckle in all directions. So to prevent that direction, to prevent that buckling in all the directions, we are going to provide stiffness. Okay, that is the most important part here. So, first of all, let us see how many stiffness are there, what are their function, and I will, after that, I am going to show all the stiffness in this diagram. That is the reason I said keep it very clear. Okay, don't draw in this. Okay, so take make a fresh page, take a fresh page and draw everything, draw this in the fresh page. So, here I am going to show all the stiffness. First, I am going to clear about the stiffness, how many types of stiffness are there, and what is the what are their functions. After that, I will show in this diagram. So, stiffness. Okay, basically stiffness are of three types. Bearing stiffness. And then vertical or transverse stiffness. And then longitudinal or horizontal stiffness. Horizontal stiffness. So in this bearing stiffness, again there exist two cases. One is end bearing stiffness. And another is load bearing stiffness. So these are the stiffness. So first you take it up.